Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. It's it's tough. Crotone Lazio could have been another time, another t- a match point for Lazio after the surprising defeat of Inter against Sassuolo and instead Lazio got away with a draw. The Lazio was even losing in the second half. Uh, it's not the result, the thing that most disappoints me. It's the performance of the team. Like if players didn't believe it or wasn't that concentrated. I don't know. Good morning. Al- Hello, Alistair. I don't know what you're thinking about this match. Uh, yeah, that was a very incredibly frustrating game to watch. Um, obviously, particularly because of what you just mentioned. The fact that Sassuolo somehow came away with a win yesterday. And to be honest, I, I think we have to apologise to Sassuolo for the way that uh, I think we'd all expected them to roll over in that game. They did us a big favour, and as a result, today was a huge opportunity. And it's really, really disappointing to come away with um, a point which does nothing. You know, it doesn't change anything for Lazio's situation, really. Um, no. no, absolutely. I mean, uh, winning or losing, uh, losing or or drawing today, uh, it was the same. Still, Lazio has to. Uh, not lose against Inter next next Sunday. So, you know, everything is still uh, open. But I believe the performance of the team today was really, really disappointing. And I have to be honest, and I tweeted already, uh, if Lazio is still fighting for the Champions League, big credit is to give to Simone Inzaghi, his decision, how players have performed with him. But I believe that if today Lazio didn't win, big, 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 big responsibility is to be given to Simone Inzaghi. Uh, I mean, the starting eleven, big surprise. Uh, no Casares, no Bastos. You know, we were all talking about Bastos could be the sub. Instead, Wallace play. And then no Marusic. And instead, there's Basta. Really, really surprising. Uh, I don't know. Let's start from here and then talk about the subs coming in. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I have to say it was... Did strike fear into my heart when I saw the team sheets come out earlier and saw Wallace's name on it. It was a big surprise. Um, and yeah, Basta was a surprise as well. I mean, the only thing I can really think of is that this this team is clearly tired. Um, but, you know, with only two games left, it does seem strange to rotate uh, in order to, you know, give, give players rest. Um, and I think throughout the, the duration of the game, you can see that uh, their, the fatigue in the side is, is quite evident. But I think you're right in what you say about Inzaghi's selection. It was it was odd um, and took us all by surprise. Um, I think, above all, Wallace, in the end, I think he was fine today, to be honest. The players who I would have most criticism for today are at the other end of the pitch from Wallace, so I, I don't think I can really criticise the way he played too much. It was just a big surprise, just like you say, that Caceres and Bastos were both overlooked. So last time Wallace played from the beginning was the March 18th against Bologna, and he was sub after 45 minutes. So, you know, it's one month, more than one month. It's nearly two months last time he played. And that's when he started. And then he was suspended against Benevento. Six matches on the bench without playing a single minute. And on the key match, he starts. And then, to be honest with you, the first goal of Crotone, it's all Wallace's fault. Because instead of stepping up and going forward to the player, he go backwards and give him all the chance to cross uh, and uh, and to allow Crotone to score. So I thought... It was his fault on the first goal. And you can see afterwards Radu shouting to him, saying, you have to go forward, not going back. So, and and then he missed, you know, his usual asses that go nowhere, etc. I thought, again, Wallace uh, played really bad. And as you were saying, you know, Caicedo was terrible. But, sorry to say, this is not a surprise. Already last Sunday, he was bad. Today, I don't know, he had one incredible chance in the first half and he missed it. 
Then a second one, uh, he, he hit the bar. And after that, he just completely disappeared. I don't think he touched the ball anymore. And, uh, you know, that was really, really disappointed. In a, in a so important match, you need your striker to perform. Instead, he was playing, playing hide-and-seek today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Casado is, I mean, it's, it's just such a, such a difference when this team has him up front as the focal point of these attacks and when Immobile is back. So, I mean, that was the, the first thing I, I put out on Twitter at the end of this game is that we just have to cross everything that um, Immobile is going to be back for Sunday because if, if there's one thing that's so evident is that we, we need him, we rely on him to... I mean, we're still scoring goals in his absence, don't get me wrong. It's just that I think the way that the, the entire team plays is far more efficient when we have his movement and his finishing um, at the end of it. And Caicedo's just, he's just not doing it for me. He's just not got enough to his game. And if you're a professional striker and you get the opportunity like he got in the first half, I just couldn't believe that, not just that he didn't score it, but the decision he made is hesitance to actually take the shot and then when he took it he put it at a perfect height for the, for the goalkeeper when he should be keeping it low putting it in the corner and I don't know he's, I think he's he's been given a big opportunity at the end of the season with Giro being injured to actually show um, that he, he does have what it takes to have a future at this club and he's not taken that, that chance No I totally agree and, uh, and the other problem is uh, okay you didn't score but you didn't even create chances, you know, you weren't moving anymore today. So you couldn't create spaces for nobody. Uh, that's another thing very disappointed for me, you know. It's, okay, I'm not a striker, but at least I run and create space, I fight. No, he didn't do nothing of, of this today. So, again, another very disappointed performance. Uh, and, uh, and then there was Basta, starting from, uh, from uh, the beginning. Basta, last time that started, was against Cagliari. So it was um, the 11th of March, again, more than two months ago. After that, he didn't play a single minute, a single minute. And then Crotone, key match, he starts. Now, maybe you can say that Basta wasn't the reason why Lazio lost. I totally agree. He didn't play that bad. He didn't play near the level Marusic uh, played in the last matches. Now, I don't know, maybe Inzaghi is going to say that Marusic, Marusic was injured because... That would only make sense because Patrick came in and not, uh, not Marusic afterwards. But still, uh, really questionable decision by Simon Enzaghi. Yeah. Um, and, well, yeah, uh, I suppose the substitutions is the next thing um, to get on to. And uh, I think... To be honest, well, to begin with, I think taking off Morja wasn't a terrible idea given he was on a yellow card. Um, but it did seem a, a bit strange to, to be using Patrick from the bench um, when you had Marisic sitting there. Um, and then Nani coming on uh, yet again offered almost nothing. Um, but, I mean, Nani, for me, actually, was one of the few players who's just immensely frustrating today. Felipe Anderson, we have to talk about as well. His, the quality of his delivery, his crossing today, it was so bad. Um, and he had another game where he just seemed to want to do everything himself. And he has this nonchalance about him, which is part of his style, and I get that. But it's in big games like this, where everything's on the line, you need to show what... You need to look like you want it a bit more than he did. Um, uh, I, I, I think Felipe Anderson is a great player, but in the finals, in the key matches, he never performed. You know why Marusic? Why sorry, Milinko Savic for me is great because in the key matches in the final, if he's fit, obviously he always shines. He's always this, deciding the match all the time. You know, and it happened today. And again today, Felipe Anderson completely disappeared. And we're talking about Crotone, not Real Madrid or Barcelona. He wasn't able. I think he, he kicked like five corners and all of them was awful that any Lazio players were able to, to, to reach it, you know, and create a dangerous shot. So this, you know, he made me regret so much uh, Luis Alberto today because 
Luis Alberto maybe doesn't move that much and maybe he hasn't got Luis, uh, Felipe Anderson talent, but he helps much more the team in the key ma- moment of the match than Felipe Anderson. Felipe Anderson is, is a little bit like Icardi, you know. Icardi probably is a very talented striker and it's probably better than, than Ciro Immobile. But in a final, would you put Icardi or Ciro Immobile? I have no doubts. I put Ciro Immobile. Same thing with Felipe Anderson. I never put Felipe Anderson in a final because you know what, you, what you're going to get. Bad performance. Um, he wasn't the only one, though, it has to be said. I mean, I think Milinkovic Savic actually was, had a poor game today. He, he scored a, a good goal at a very important point of the match, but he was another one who seemed to be determined to do everything himself, and uh, I, I think he, he could have been a lot more influential than he was. Um, we, we have a lot of individual talent in this team, but sometimes you just think that they need to be working together a bit more when they're all on the, on the pitch together. And we did see some nice moments of link up between Anderson and Milinkovic Savage today, but it, it tends to be the, uh, that the norm is, is different that they're, they're looking to do things themselves, particularly Anderson. Um, yeah. It's, and it's a worry. It's a worry going into this inter game and, Obviously, the fact that Inter lost to Sassuolo shows that they're not in great form either. And uh, the, the thing is, with Lazio's form at the moment, is there's, there's I think it's nine matches unbeaten now. So on paper, this is you know it's a great run for Lazio. Don't get me wrong, but I think they're in the last couple of matches. If you've actually been watching closely, it's quite obvious to see that the performances haven't really reflected um, the form on paper. No, I totally agree, and you're right. It's true. Lazio didn't uh, didn't lose has a has an important streak of uh, matches, but we didn't see that Lazio that we were used to be. And I believe I believe that the reason why is uh, the absence of Parolo, Immobile, Luis Alberto. They are not only the key player, but they are the leader. And uh, I didn't see a team convinced, a team fighting for every single ball today, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the one of the reasons why we didn't see that eye of the tiger today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's true, Inter lost against Asuolo, but we have to be honest, Consigli made a couple of incredible saves, and we can't say the same today uh, about the Crotone goalkeeper. Yeah, he made a very good save, but, you know, <laughs> I wasn't impressed. And talking about Milinkovic Savic, I thought again this was a terrible mistake of of uh, Simone Zaghi. I thought that he put Milinkovic Savic far away from the goal when he put uh, Nani in and played with a four three three with uh, with uh, with Milinkovic Savic back in the midfield near near Lucas Leva. So I, again, that was a poor decision from from uh, our manager. Are you there, Alistair? Yeah, it's also another example. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it was just another example of... Uh, uh, in there, we, we've spoken before about when Lazio need a goal. A few times this season, and Zaghi's basically just chucked on all his attacking players and hoped for the best, and there hasn't been an awful lot of structure to that, that decision. And I think it was a bit like that again today. To be fair, he kind of had to do that because, we, like we said at the start, we needed a win. It doesn't matter if we lose in the process of trying to get a win. We needed that win. Um, so by bringing on Nani again, it, it just didn't. It didn't seem to have any real structure to it. It was just wave upon wave of, of attack and um, without any real focal point other than Caicedo, who who just wasn't doing the job and even as a link-up player, wasn't managing to, to link up properly with the players around him. So I think that was disappointing. Uh, Inzaghi's not been very flexible all year in terms of changing his formation, and it's annoying as well to see that, you know, when we're desperate for a goal, that, that same old fallback option is, is still happening, which don't, isn't working for us, throwing on Nani and, and seeing what happens. Yeah, in particular because we have to be honest, all the time the, the, it's Milko Savic who, 
who decided this, this match. So basically, the thing to do is to put Milinkovic Savic as a striker instead of pulling in uh, Nani and, and the other players. So I think that was basically the only solution Lazio had to do. And uh, you know, I, I defended Nani in the past. Today, again, he came in and was terrible. I think, I think he made a tackle against Trotta and lost it. And uh, Crotone had an incredible counter-attack. Now, from a player of his experience against Crotone, we're not talking about Real Madrid. I was expecting much, much more. I think he was never dangerous and never created any chance for anybody. That, again, was really disappointing. And, and I cannot understand, honestly, because sometimes when he comes in and play for instead of the central striker, he's much more dangerous than when he comes in and you know he plays behind or on the side of of uh, of the other strikers uh, and and Inzaghi keep doing the same mistake you know i i understand there were no option but I, I mean desperate as you are put pedro neto you don't know maybe he's he's going to change everything you know he's young he has nothing to lose i don't know yeah well i mean i think it's a bit late in the season to be going to that option that you know throwing on neto would be even less uh <laughs> Even more of a gamble, I suppose, than um, than putting Nani on the pitch. But yeah, I just I've not, I've not seen anything all season from him really, um, with the exception of maybe that one game against Bologna. Uh, I've not really seen anything otherwise to suggest that he fits into this team and that he has a role to play. And now that we basically know he's not staying at the club after this summer, I don't really see the point in in having him on the on the pitch because. It's been proven by now that he's not managing to make an impact and um, desperately hoping that that's going to turn around in, with two games to go. It seems a bit, a bit over-optimistic from Inzaghi. Yeah. Uh, one point we have to say is that Crotone made 11 points in the last seven matches. So, you know, they were on a good run of form and uh, the last match they lost at home, I think, was against Spal 3-2 and then uh, till January against Napoli 1-0. So at home, they, they are quite a good team. Again, you go on front with a penalty. I think Lazio should have managed much better the, 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 the performance, the result. And in the second half, I got the impression that Crotone was, was you know, tired. And then Inzaghi make those changes that create only confusion on the team. And Lazio wasted 10, 15 minutes to, to recover from the substitution. I don't know if you had the same impression. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, watching that game and getting a penalty so early on, you know, the, the stadium was sold out. There was a great atmosphere, um, a great choreography from their fans to begin with. And, you know, this everything was on the line for them because they're trying to uh, avoid relegation and it's so close down there. And I thought, coming into this match, winning a penalty so early on and scoring it was the perfect way to kind of silence that crowd make that team feel far more comfortable after, you know, a, a fairly edgy start to the match and just kind of manage it from there. It, it put us in such a good position that I couldn't help but feel pretty confident after that. Um, and, yeah, and instead we end up going 2-1 down. Um, I think that's the most frustrating part of this entire game today, really, is having the lead and throwing it away. Um, just making life more difficult because that's really a mentality issue as well is being able to confidently manage the game and uh, you know once you're in the lead we don't need to be obviously committing so many players to attacks and we can hold on to the ball a bit more which is something that this team is very good at doing is retaining possession and and you know just tiring out the opposition and uh, with the amount of possession that we had in that game and the ease with which we were kind of cutting through their midfield I was really disappointed with the lack of chances that we actually managed to create the, the number of clear chances we had um, versus the amount of time we spent in their half really was quite poor Yeah, again I would blame Caicedo for not being active and creating chances and uh, the you know, up 1-0, I think it's not a surprise, surprise that the goal came from the right side, where there was Wallace, Basta, uh, there. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why 
uh, Crotone had that easy chance. And if if you go back and look, it's Felipe Anderson that lose, loses the ball and then chases the player and then simply give up. Said, okay, I, I arrive here. It's your job now. And then he's free to cross the ball. You know, that's that's really, in a match so important, so important, I, I, I really cannot accept that. So, and, and I'm surprised that uh, uh, to see players playing like that, you know. I'm really disappointed, really disappointed. Um, it looks like Inzaghi said, next week I will decide if the Fry will play against Inter or, or, or less. Now I'm trying to find the quotes, but this is what's coming out from Twitter. Would you, be, would, you would you play the Fry? Well, this has been a great debate this week. <laughs> um, yeah, we asked the question on Twitter earlier this week, and it's safe to say it got a massively divided opinion. Um, people seem really split about how they feel about this. Um, I, I think, from my perspective, I do trust his professionalism. Uh, I don't think that's up for question. Um, but it would be very difficult to be in his position and not feel the, the pressure of the, of the occasion. Because it's not really about um, the quest. The, the debate isn't really about whether or not he's going to give 100%. It's more about how distracted he could be that if he does make a mistake, the Lazio fans could take it as intentional. Um, and basically... <laughs> the amount of tension that's going to be put on him. The problem is that De Vrij's been by far and away our best defender all season long, and particularly in the last couple of games. We wouldn't have got two draws in our last two games if it wasn't for De Vrij. That's worth remembering. He was by far the best player in defence against Atalanta today. Don't forget, he saved us with a goal line clearance when Crippone yep. really should have scored. So if you're picking your best team, he definitely has to be in the team. Um, the only other option is bringing back Luis Felipe after his suspension to go into the middle of that back three. But it's a big gamble from Inzaghi if he decides to fry his mind isn't in the right place. But, I mean, it's it's a huge call. I, I, in terms of a selection decision, I don't think Inzaghi's come across anything like this before. I, I don't think a lot of managers have. To be honest with you, no, you know, but again, uh, today big response. We could have closed it today. Uh, Crotone was an easy match, etc. But I think without the weird decision in Zagi made today, Lazio probably could have won it. So uh, I blame him if he's now in this situation. And you know, as you said, and as Rami Algendi just tweeted us, the Rai has saved us from a des- deserved loss today. You know. He made that incredible save and as you were saying, he played probably he was the best defender in the last couple of matches. Uh, again, what happens Sunday if you know he's playing and make a mistake or will he be 100% focused or would he be distracted? I don't know. But... Uh, if it's, um, I mean, the poll we did on Twitter was just saying should he start against him? Is there a yes or no? And uh, we had 110 votes and 46% were yes and 54% were no. So it was really close. If it came down to a yes or no, would you? what would you go for? It, it depends e- even to see who are my other options, right? Because yeah. if, if, it's, if it's this Wallace, then no, absolutely. The Vrij plays even for, with the Inter shirt, I prefer than, than Wallace. Uh, Bastos, Casares, then maybe it's another option. But and we have to see Rado who came off. I don't know why another weird decision was the substitution of of Rado if he if he wasn't injured. So, uh, but yeah, that's gonna be an interesting option. And again, we could avoid it easily, beating uh, Crotone today. Uh, I, I don't want to say too often, but it's absolutely the truth. Uh, Diane on uh, on. Uh, Spreaker with Wallace, Felipe Anderson and Ali Murge and Felipe Cacedo up front. I'm not even sure just to hold Inter 0-0 at Olimpico. Yeah, if we play today, like if we play next Sunday like this, it's going to be complicated. 
you know, we don't create any much chances like that. Well, whilst you don't know how to play for a nil-nil, <laughs> it's, it's impossible to see. Um, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a case where, as we so often say about Lazio, really is that the best case scenario would be getting an early goal, and that that would be really what I think Inzaghi should be setting his team out to do is um, not think about drawing the game, but think about winning the game. Um, but and we always score goals. I mean, that's one thing. Apart from the Roma derby, I suppose that was the one exception. But this team is always going to eventually score goals. So it's. Uh, I don't think that the, the the approach to this game needs to be any different than it would be normally. Um, but obviously, that's easier said than done with what's at stake. Yeah, you know, you have to even see how how Inter played because. I think they were convinced they were, their fight was over. So, you know, now you, are, you have life again and maybe you give everything you have and you outplay Lazio. Could happen, you know. Inter is not that terrible team. So, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fundamental to see who will recover. Parolo, Immobile, Luis Alberto. Because, again, Felipe Anderson playing on Sunday. I'm more concerned to see Felipe Anderson playing Sunday than Temporal. You know, if he's playing like that, the Lazio is playing 10 men. And imagine if we are playing the key matches with Casado or Felipe Anderson. It's going to be a disaster. So there are a lot of worrying things uh, for, for next Sunday. It's true we, need, we have two results uh, out of three. But as you were saying, Lazio never play for a draw. And uh, it's, it's quite complicated for a team like that that allows so many goals to fight for a draw. You know, So... Yeah, it's it's really complicated. It's really complicated. Obviously, um, obviously, um, Inter is not an amazing team, but if they play really well, you know, they can still beat Lazio. I think. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, there's it's a team with a lot of quality players in it, and. Clearly, they have the quality to get a result if they turn up. So, I suppose the one, yeah, the one positive has been that they're coming into this on a pretty, uh, you know, pretty dodgy run of form themselves, having lost the uh, loss against the Swole, obviously yesterday, but also lost the event a couple of weeks before that as well. So, uh, and we're playing at home, so you know we have an advantage. This the Stadio Olimpico should be full. Uh, again, as I said last Wednesday, I never saw a fan scoring a goal, but it should be a big support for the players, especially players like Felipe Anderson, I hope, who usually uh, don't perform really well in top matches. Maybe with the fans chanting all all uh, all match long, they're going to help them, even though I still prefer to see Luis Alberto playing and especially Shiren Mobile after this great form of uh, Caicedo. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the other thing is that if Immobile plays, he's unlikely to manage 90 minutes, um, which will make it even more important to get on the front foot early on and get get uh, get the goal while he's on the pitch. Um, so I think it is very important that Lazio take advantage of the benefit of it being a home game with, uh, yeah, like you say, a full stadium. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere there. So if they can thrive in that atmosphere, get get in, in front early on with Immobile and be in a position, hopefully, that uh, by the time Chiro has to come off, we're actually in control of the game. That would be the, the dream situation. Yeah. Even though <laughs> with Lazio's never on control, right? Well, that's the thing. It's um, It has made for an incredibly entertaining <laughs> season, but... You can never really, yeah. You can never sit back and feel very comfortable with Lazio because they are equally uh, as capable at throwing away goals, like we saw um, against Salzburg, obviously, as they are to go and score a lot. So, yeah, I mean, it it, it does make it very exciting, but it does also make it extremely uh, 
it's not good for your health, basically, as a fan, is it? No, no, no. Um, yeah, Lazio allows too many goals. Uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Lucas Leva because it didn't, today didn't shine like last Sunday against Atalanta. Now it looks like Sunday he was really tired and had a little bit of problems. Uh, do you think... First, do you agree with me he didn't play that well? We expected more from him, even as a leader. Second, do you think it's because he's tired, he has problems, or there's something else? So, is it Lucas Levy you're talking about? Yep. Yeah. Um, I thought he was okay today. Um, I thought he was he, he, he did better than he did last time out. Um, and, yeah, I think... He's, he's he's got a really hard role, a hard job in this team because of what we've just talked about, because this defence is is so flaky and um, the wing backs often don't provide the support that they need to to the defenders. He's got a big job actually breaking things up. And today I thought he did he did a good job of that. And or in the set in the first half he put in a really important block and to Simi to stop him getting shots away from a good position and. Yeah, and going forward as well, he was driving the team forward, took it, had a decent effort from the edge of the box. So I, I did think today was a big improvement from him, actually. Um, I, I quite liked him tonight. But uh, but yeah, I mean, he's he's going to be immensely important against Inter because of that experience and the, the calmness that he kind of transmits to the rest of the midfield. And yeah, I'd... In terms of the tiredness thing, I think that just applies to this whole squad. But for him, it's probably particularly um, evident just because he's been relied upon all season long. He hasn't really had any injury problems, so he's played an awful lot of matches and is always playing 90 minutes, more or less. And he's playing the centre midfield. So he's probably run more more miles than almost anyone else in the team this season. And he is over 30 now, so he might be feeling it a bit more than the others. Um, but... You know, he he at least plays at a slightly slower pace than the rest. So hopefully he can manage to get through another 90 minutes. <laughs> uh, I, I recover some quotes from Simone Zaghi. He said this is a draw that doesn't help none of them, none of the team, Lazio and Crotone. Uh, now we are focused on our match on Sunday. Uh, it looks like it's our faith that this last match will decide the, the, the qualification from the Champions League. We have a second match point and we play in front of our fans that always help us. So, And they'll continue to do it next Sunday. We'll try to do a, a tough match. We are not playing for the draw, we are playing for winning. Um, uh, for De Vrij will be a, a normal week. He will prepare with all the rest of the team. And then it's me, the, the manager, who have to make the, the decision uh, if to play him or not. But I think he's a great professional player. And today he has been great, and I'm all, I'm really happy to to manage him. But I will have to make some valuation, uh, and I think it's right to do it. Uh, he he honored the shirt till the last second. My my doubt is, uh, it's related to what the other members of the fans will will bring. Uh, regarding of the injury, I hope to have more players available next Sunday. So he didn't say pretty much nothing. Well, I think this whole thing, the whole question is going to come down to De Vrij himself and the conversations that Inzaghi has with him because if De Vrij says that he has any doubts or feels uncomfortable about it, Inzaghi has no choice but to avoid picking him, really. And if you've still got a back three of, say, Caceres, Luis Felipe and Radu, that's still a decent defence. Um, so I think if everyone is fit and available, then Inzaghi does have that option, but you know, again, it was another. I, it was another thing about tonight. You know, he's, he was given the perfect opportunity to avoid having to make this huge call. Because if the Champions League wasn't on the line in that game anymore, and we'd won the game tonight, then you know it would be fine to play Dubai against Inter because it would have more or less been a meaningless game. So it's yet another reason why <laughs> failing to beat Crotone today is is so frustrating. Is that is now still a huge question that is going to be, you know, looming large over the next week going into that game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Show Macintosh on Twitter. My thoughts. Inzaghi has been right more times than not all season, but tonight he he got it very wrong. 
Caicedo and Anderson were beyond poor. Most disappointed with Anderson, who I expect more from. The Vrij played like the number one player, deserving of wearing the Lazio kit. Ironic. Yeah, we said it, you know. Uh, Caicedo and Anderson really, really bad today. Uh, Caicedo didn't do nothing in the second half. At least Anderson gets credit for the assets of the second goal, even though I believe that was uh, a magician from, uh, from uh, Milikovic Savic, who is so dangerous in the box. And, you know, he had the other two chances just afterwards that could have given us three points and the, and the qualification. And Zagi said that Lazio had three great chances with Casedo and Milikovic Savic. And then, let's not forget, we hit the bar. Even though I believe the goalkeeper was there, so even if it wasn't hitting the crossbar, probably the goalkeeper would have saved it. But anyway, Lazio had the chances, but we missed them. So, uh, I, I, my biggest question is, we, we have to get at least Immobile and Parolo back because Caicedo is not convincing. And I didn't like that much Murcia today. He made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, Murcia is another one like Caicedo, I suppose, who has, you know, he struggled for opportunities all season long because of the competition for places in his role. Um, and he was given a big chance in the last few games to, to go and prove that he can be a first team player and really compete for that shirt. And I don't think he's really taken it. And that's really disappointing. I think we're particularly disappointed about Murja because we're both really big fans of him at the start of the season, had big, had high hopes for what he could do this season. And obviously that winning goal in the Super Cup was a, was a great omen to start with. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think he's really seized the opportunity. And if Parolo's fit and available, which it looks like he should be, then he has to go straight back into that team because he's so important and actually providing the balance of that midfield. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope someone asks Inzaghi the reason of of uh, of Basta starting and not and not uh, Maric because I think that's a very interesting question. I'm surprised no one no one asked him. Yeah, um, and again, this right there is the the right touch it with the head. The assist is of the try on the second goal. I almost forgot. Again, <laughs> Casado is invisible even there. Yeah. Um, I suppose that's the other thing. I mean, going back to that last comment that you read out as well, is that the perhaps this... Uh, the idea of De Vrij's performances or his attitude being questioned has maybe, maybe brought out an even better level of performance from him. I mean, he's he has certainly been right on top of his game in the last few matches and that's kind of since all this chat about whether he should play against Inter or not has started up so you know there it might end up turning into a positive thing yeah who knows do you think Inzaghi is going to risk him I think it's yeah I mean like I said before I think it will all come down to the conversations he has with De Vrij it's it, and it has to, you know, it, it has to be down to the player himself, more or less, because De Vrij will know that he, his place in that team isn't under question if he's willing to play. But if he's willing to admit that his head's not in the right place, then then he can't play. I think, you know, he's got a professional responsibility to say to Inzaghi that I don't think I can do it. Um, whereas... If, uh, if he's really not affected by the whole thing. And let's not forget, nothing's actually been made official yet with Inter. Um, so if he does feel absolutely fine and not distracted by it, then then yeah. then he should play. Um, I think it entirely comes down to his own attitude about it. Even though yesterday Auxilio said, uh, De Vrij, everybody knows from January where he's going to go. I thought that the, 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 the Auxilio quote was really rude, really... Uh, unpolite, you know, very, very uh, arrogant as well. I felt really, really disappointed from from a man, from you know uh, a general manager of a, of an Italian club saying those words. And today, Tari replied saying that uh, there is no problem with the Vrai, uh, but we didn't like the, the what happened this week with with the announcement and and the, and the quotes about other team on on the Vrai. We thought it wasn't correct. And uh, the news could be given one month ago instead of waiting the last week. So, 
I don't know. I, 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 I agree with, with Tare this time. I thought Inter didn't play dirty, but could avoid saying it right now, creating more and more problems to, to Lazio. Yeah, uh, well, this is just the horrible, the horrible thing about losing players at the end of their contracts for free is that you have this uncertainty going on while there's still matches being played and really important matches at that. So I think it's always best to make sure that obviously you, your your bigger players aren't in this situation in the first place because if in, if De Vrij was still under contract all that would be going on right now would be transfer rumours about what could happen when the market opens and it's not going to be a conversation about whether or not he's actually already signed the contract. So it does make it much more difficult than it should be, really. Um, the fact that if you fail to keep your players, um, have them tied down, then it can actually have an impact on, on the pitch as well as off it. Yeah. Still, I, I believe that uh, the timing of Inter was terrible. Terrible. And, and it was evident the leak of info coming from them because... Uh, a lot of journalists said that it's, there is the official announcement, but there was nothing on the on the football on the Italian Federation uh, website. So someone who deposited the contract called them and said, "We did it." Um, so you know, it, it can give even extra motivation to the fans to support Lazio next Sunday and to the players to to perform next Sunday better. I don't know. <laughs> No, you don't think so. Yeah, well, possibly. Um, we'll soon find out. I mean, I think it's easy to read too much into these things, really. Um, I don't know how much of an impact it's going to be having on the rest of the squad, but yeah, it's, it's just it's a distraction and a subplot that I wish, just really wish wasn't going on while the season's still happening because we're going to have enough of this to deal with during the summer with all the transfer talk. So it's a bit of a shame that. Yeah, but it's already going on. Yeah, well, uh, as we said, the summer transfer will be much shorter this season, so hopefully there will be less rumours than uh, than last year, hopefully, and they will last less than last year, so it should be better for us, even though, you know, this means that Lotito Tare has less time. One thing important for of those last two, two matches is that, you know, Tare and Lotito have no excuse I say they're simply not good enough to be the subs of of Chino Mobile, and he proved it right in the last two weeks. So this is the positive thing about these last two matches. Well, yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to read it that way, it's true. I mean, yeah, we we said this before, I suppose, that the the one thing, if you want to find a silver lining from these injury problems that we've had to key players, is that it's it's become pretty evident that the that the quality of depth in the squad does need improved, and we all we all already knew that as Lazio fans anyway. But I think it's a good, it's a timely reminder for Tari and Lotito watching this team and the. You know that they're still in a position where they could end up throwing away Champions League football, and that's more or less as a result of the squad not having adequate quality um, in depth. So yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully they would already have been addressing that in the summer anyway. But you know, if you want to try and spin it in a positive way, it could at least uh, you know spur them on to make sure that that happens this summer. Yeah, uh, Inzaghi always said that. Uh, Casado played very little just because in front of him there is Chile Mobile. Uh, today we we saw that that wasn't the only reason why. You know, Chile Mobile is much better than than Casado, but Casado proved to not be the striker Lazio was looking for. To be honest, Inzaghi was saying the same thing of Djordjevic last summer, last year. So I I believe Inzaghi knows that there is a problem and simply want to hide and. Uh, you know, protect his player till Lazio finds someone else. I hope this is <laughs> this is what Inzaghi is thinking. Yeah, um, yeah. I've just seen another another comment from him saying it was uh, it was destiny for um, Lazio to end up having this opportunity against Inter. So that's one way of looking at it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's worth you know today. Today was a huge disappointment. Don't get me wrong, but it it is worth appreciating that we are still very much in control of this situation you know and if there's a two-point lead um over inter in fourth place on the final day uh, to be honest if you'd asked us uh, would you take that situation back in august we would have definitely taken it so um yeah uh yes but putting in the same freak sentence lazio and control doesn't match very well i don't think lazio this type of team has anything on control, especially, you know, without Luis Alberto, Chile, Mobile and Parolo. I think this, the quality of this team drops massively. Uh, more than the quality, I think the leadership is more appropriate. You know, the team players that calm down the team, okay, we're one up, uh, let's control the ball, let's move it and not give any, any, uh, the, the other team the option. Or we are one nil down, okay, there's still plenty of time, let's control, etc., etc. I don't think this is Uh, this is what's happening right now with the with the team without without those key players. So that's why for me it's really really important to to see them back in the pitch. Now we saw the video of Chino Mobile running again uh, last week, and uh, and uh, Rosabetto running in the swimming pool. Uh, so they're both fighting to be back. I think Luis Alberto is a little bit behind. It's going to be really really tough to see him play, but maybe with Chino Mobile we have more chances. Yeah, um, I think yeah, like like we said before, so so much really depends on Tiro Mobile, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's something that, that we really have to pray for in the next week is that he is he's going to be back for this because it's going to make all the difference and and as well you know it's the the other subplot of this last winter game is the Capocannone race which which is going to be fought out between him and Icardi in this game. So as a striker, you know what they're like. They, they like these records, and I'm sure that that's going to give him an even bigger motivation um, on top of the, the, the team's motivation is to actually make sure that he finishes ahead of Icardi in that race. So, you know, it's good to take advantage of every possible uh, subplot which might help players get the best. I have a stat uh, this time. Uh, I don't know if I'm stealing it from you. No, no. Miliko Isavic with 12 goals is the midfielder that has scored more in this season. In what, in Serie A? Yep. That is a good stat. Well done. I feel a little bit offended that you've <laughs> taken the stat control off me, but... Sorry, next time I'm going to get... Desperately going to try and find another one now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, again, uh, and we said it, you know, uh, Miliko Isavic, it's much, much more dangerous when he gets near or inside the box. And Inzaghi today, at a certain point, in, point brought him back, you know, at the same side of uh, Lucas Leva. I thought that was another huge mistake from, uh, from Simone Inzaghi. Luckily, we still have a match point. Uh, I don't know. I feel like, you know... Uh, nearly now Inter is, has an advantage because they were pretty much out yesterday and now they're back. They have an extra life, you know, like in the video games. Am I wrong? No, I don't think you are. Um, I think for them it's going to have been a huge boost because they would have probably expected yesterday that that was it for them. So to be given a lifeline, like you say, it's, it's going to be a huge motivation for them a huge confidence boost for them and yeah don't, I mean don't forget Champions League football is a huge deal for, for Inter obviously um, and with their own problems they've had with financial fair play I think they could do with the, the extra money from it on top of everything else as well so it's um, yeah it's 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 huge I mean it's, it's obvious that how, how big this game's going to be but uh, yeah for Inter I think Having watched that game today, they must be absolutely delighted and absolutely buzzing for for the result that Crotone have managed to pull out of the bag for them. Yeah, Walid Mohamed is asking, why in Zaghi field two players that have not played in the last two months, Bas and Wallace? What was the idea there? Preparing them for the Inter game? I hope not. <laughs> Because if they play against Inter, then I see our chances pretty much disappeared. Uh, the only... Th Excuse I have 
is that Basta, Bastos wasn't feeling well, or Marusic probably wasn't feeling well, because Casares came in afterwards. Uh, so, you know, maybe he prefers Casares on the left side. But Marusic, that was playing well. That's the biggest surprise, you know. You say Marusic was playing badly, poorly. No, I thought he was playing better in the last matches. And uh, instead, he didn't come in. So I presume he wasn't feeling well. I don't know. Yeah, I think it has to be Yeah, the, uh, something like that or tiredness, like I mentioned at the start of the show, perhaps as well. But yeah, I mean, there there isn't really, to, to be honest, to answer that question, there isn't really any any uh, way of being able to explain that. It does seem like an, a very strange t- time of the season to be bringing in guys who are who are so rusty, um, and it's a shame that it's uh, it's a shame that it's not worked out. No, men of the match for you today. Um, I think Stefan de Vrij actually was pretty good. Um, I think he saved us on a couple of occasions, um, dealt with the threat of Simi quite well. Um, obviously, the, the goal line clearance was really good. Um, I thought uh, Milinkovic Savic didn't have his best game, but he did manage to did manage to you know basically get us back on level terms um, when we needed it the most. Um, But to be honest, there weren't too many contenders, I think, today for, for that award. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought it was, you know, uh, uh, more, more, more contender for the worst player of the match today. There were a lot of options. Uh, even Strakosh, I didn't like him in the second uh, goal, second Crotone goal. Uh, but, you know, there were, there were plenty of players, Bastanani, Murcia. I think I say to win it by far, but uh, Felipe Anderson was close. <laughs> Man of the match, yeah, probably De Vrij was, you know, if Lazio got the draw, it's just because De Vrij made the assist and saved the, the goal on the line, so I would think De Vrij is it's the man of the match. But I think the most important thing this week is to recover uh, at least uh, Immobile and Parolo. I think they are the only one who really Lazio can, can recover for the next match. And Before closing, do you think after seeing Murcia today that the Gennaro could have a chance next Sunday if Parolo is not fit? I really hope not. Um, uh, you know, when you're talking about bringing in Basta and Wallace without playing football for a, a while, I mean, when was the last time Di Gennaro started a game? I I don't know, maybe Europa League group stage? Um, <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I can't. I can't imagine him going straight into the team for that game. I think, if anything, we're bit better served having having Lulic in the middle of, and um, and alternating whoever's at wing back, whether that could be Patrick or Marisic on the left hand side. You know, there there are more options there that I'd be comfortable with than putting Di Gennaro back in that team. Yeah, but it was funny that yesterday there were rumours that Di Gennaro could start today. Hmm. So, yeah. Know. Well, I mean, that that for me that would have been far more surprising than than Wallace and Basta. So Di Gennaro played three minutes, three minutes against Sampdoria, the twenty two of March, April. Sorry, and I think that was the last appearance, and uh, the last match he started well in Serie A. It's uh, against Verona. So it's last year, last September. Uh, I think the last one is October against Nice. Wow, he didn't play that much this year. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I think to throw him into the biggest game of the season and the Champions League playoff would be asking a bit much. Yeah, but you know, I was surprised to see Wallace and Basta. So, you know, I'm a little bit scared of Inzaghi decision now yeah I mean the thing is Inzaghi's decision making is in terms of his selection has generally been pretty predictable this season he's, he's not often thrown in too many kind of wild cards choices I mean the one I remember 
more recently, just because it was the one game I've actually made it to this year, was the Bologna match. Yeah, that was when awful. When he decided to put uh, all the attackers on at the same time. Um, but generally, it's pretty easy to predict what he's going with. So it is slightly worrying to see this happen today, just because of how big the game next Sunday's going to be. And you, you really want your best, most reliable 11 out there. And there's so much still up in the air in terms of injuries. And now, um, now whether these uh, kind of, I suppose, these guys who haven't played for months and months now coming back into contention again it is is a bit of a strange one I think Nzagi would would love to uh, have a far more simple task of choosing his team than he's than he's got yeah yeah well let's hope that uh, as I said often today Parola and Mobile are back again I would love to see Luis Alberto but I don't know I think it's very complicated to see him back Alistair, I think we can wrap it up here. Uh, if if you love the show and want to support us, remember we are on Patreon, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. If you want to support us, membership starts from just two dollars a month. So, you know, it's a little gesture for you, but really big for us. And you can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, and of course subscribe to our iTunes uh, podcast on iTunes and on Spreaker. Thank you, Alistair. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and get uh, something better than this match. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to do something to try and forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you this time. Bye, everybody, and thanks for watching us. Bye. Come on, you eagles. There's no time to Watching our soul